Hello SG Dealer, let's just get straight into it. Do the pyramids mirror Orion belt either now or in the past? This image is the one that is often referenced and it's uh, a little bit, I don't want to say deceptive, but I would say not, not very appropriate use of the image because you're using these blurry stars of Orion's belt, Al Natak, Al Nilam and Mintaka, Mintaka, exact pronunciation, I forget, but do, do, Orion's belt. Does Orion's belt fit the Great Pyramid? Well, this is the image which is referenced. You're using very fuzzy imagery there. It's not very... So, a uh, sky shot of the Great of the Giza Plateau on the three pyramids there. There we have the... Um, just underneath there we have the Sphinx and there we have Caffrey's Causeway. We'll come to this as an important point. So there we have Orion's belt. Just mark the stars out there. Orion's belt. Now, to get this theory to fit that Orion's belt is mirrored in the Giza pyramids you need to flip that around in the before I go on the offense let's do the defense and this might be said to be gym, mental gymnastics but for instance a globe of the constellations has the mirrors reversed it's a god's eye view it's projecting it down Hermeticists uh, have been using this method you can, you can find it in the Grand Central Terminal for instance and other places so there is something to that, so I wouldn't, you know, but if we get Orion's belt and we project it down onto the Giza pyramid, so we're using Alnatak, we have to flip them around. So Alnatak is on the Great Pyramid, Alnalam is on Caffrey's Pyramid, and if we use those as our points to find the focus, what we have is that Minkara's Pyramid alignment is missing by over 40 metres. This is a significant number, and we'll get to this in a moment, because I'm by no means a, a, a cheerleader for the establishment. If you're familiar with what I do, it's certainly not cheerleading the establishment, but I also am not afraid to go uh, to... Me because there's gatekeepers on the establishment, and there's also gatekeepers' vested interest on the alternative. And now, if we do the same thing, we get those, and now we use I mean, take her on Menkara's Pyramid, and we send to the other one on, Caf on uh, the Great Pyramid, Caffrey's is missing by about 30 metres, probably a little bit over and being conservative there. So it's 30 to 40 metres out, however you do it. So currently, Orion's belt does not mirror the Great Pyramids. That is undisputable, that is measurable, that is testable. However, let's just say, okay, but stars move slowly over time. Constellations are not fixed over hundreds and thousands of years they move. Old constellations, for instance, in the Greek era, are no longer in the 88 official constellations because the stars have moved. Corvus, uh, the, the blackbird, the servant bird of Apollo, is one example. Oh no, sorry, not Corvus, Noctua, the owl, which was at the, uh, on that same grouping. We have Corvus, Crater, and Hydra. Noctua, the owl, used to be there. It's no longer an official. So constellations move over time. This is the Hipparchus satellite. Its primary mission is to measure the slow movement of stars. Uh, ESA, uh, European Space Agency and others have all this data out there. There are GIFs and, and sites devoted to this. You can look at Stellarium, Sky Safari, other site, um, other Star Watcher apps where you can not just look and find your planets and your stars. You can also adjust the date and go back in time to see how different constellations, etc. were arranged in the past. But here we have um, the image of how Orion's belt used to look. This is how it looks now. So the shield pretty screw with okay it's all now today in 50,000 years it's going to be all messed up in 100,000 years it'll be you know except for Orion's belt the rest of the constellation are, will be unrecognizable so you based off this data here we can ask the question will stars move slowly over time so did it fit 10,000 it does not fit now this this is undisputable this is a fact um, now in did it fit in the past the answer is well depends okay so what we have is if we use Alnatak and Mintaka uh, as our central alignment points and there we have the move as you can see so we have the line it's almost a straight line Orion's belt and as we move further and further into the future it gets more and more kinked in the past it was that's the direction that, so if you go back in time that's where Alnalam is going to move if you go forward in time that's where um, Alnalam is moving towards. And because this image over the Giza pyramids is reversed, that means the further you go back in time, the worse the alignment gets. 
So using that as our base method, not only does it not fit now, it was actually worse in the past. Now we could also, now we'll, were Alnatak and Alnalam centered on the Great Pyramid and on Khafre's Pyramid? And in this case, so you have to, you know, uh, now they're also growing further apart the distance between the out, two outermost stars of Orion's belt. Now, if you're projecting it down on there, that, that should, it's the relationship between them, not the distance between the outermost and um, between the ones on either side, because it's, it's the alignment between them. Now, in this case, if you were to do it that way, the arrangement would be slightly better in the past, 10,500 BC, but it still wouldn't match. Uh, it's still this Menkara still wouldn't go on there. So at 10,500 BC, based on this data, it would not match, no matter how you look at it. It does not match current day, however you look at it. And uh, this is a like a screenshot from um, is it Giulio Mamagli. Now, what he points out here here is that the southern edge of Caffrey's pyramid, if you run the line, so you have the uh, Sphinx just underneath there. That's the equinox. That's line from O to B is Caffrey's, uh the causeway. And line O to C is directly in between Caffrey's pyramid and the Great Pyramid. And as he points out, and uh, that's the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere, June 21st. That's the equinox line. Arket, the Nile, the season of Nile flooding. There were three seasons in ancient Egypt, and uh, so if you look at procession, I would also, uh, you know, we've got a bit of an issue that they would put four seasons and talk about procession in the Great Year at Egypt. It was a three season cycle that they had. That was the heartbeat of of the Nile and the flooding cycles. Arket was the season of inundation or a flood. That's the old hieroglyph for it between two mountains or the horizon. Now later. Uh, goes back to, so this is about the 11th century BC, 1500, 15th century BC, you'll also see the same. But where we have the two lions looking outwards, and that's uh, young Horus there inside the Urubus, the serpent, Rara, I won't, okay, I'm going to cover that into a future one. But uh, the same, the sun symbol rising between the, the lions there. Uh, the oldest reference to it is like this, but what we have is... This point marks the summer solstice, the Nile flooding cycle. And that marks the season, this important season. We have the equinox there. And the reason I point to this, I'll put, so for instance, summer solstice, midsummer, June 21st, 22nd currently, the sun would set right down in there between those. Now, if that is a representation of Arket, that's uh, now you can. I'll put the link to the description in the paper because they're trying to connect uh, Khufu as the builder of the pyramids, Arket Khufu, this old symbol. Uh, I'm personally not, you know, okay, I'm not sold on yet, yeah, you know, but anyway, that's not the point now because these are things, you know, my opinion is irrelevant in this. It's what's measurable, what's there, what, what fits into the structure, the architecture, the, the engineering is, and the dates and the measures and the seasons which are well established. Um, so this link will be in the description there, and I'll also put this link because this is uh, the Robert Bavall site. Now, uh, there is a persistent but erroneous theory regarding the layout of the Giza pyramids originally that the southern, southeastern corners of the three pyramids, G3, Menkara, Khafre G2, and the Great Pyramid, find the diagonal deliberately intended to link up with the city of Heliopolis. Now, let's before we go there let's just uh what we have now whether it was intentional or not what we have is that the the three geyser pyramids individually and not an, the satellite pyramids will be included as well like sorry my computer is super slow because i've got like a thousand tabs open okay so whether you look at the satellite pyramids or each of the three pyramids you draw a line across the diagonal they not only point at heliopolis they point at the mound of Heliopolis, that sacred mound which is being confirmed by geophysical surveys, this ancient mound which rose above the flood waters at Heliopolis. Book of the Dead, pyramid text, coffin text, all of them, are even the Nubian Book of the Dead, references Heliopolis in a high reverence. So they had the uh, 
Jabir Barkul, which they consider to be the, the mound, the sacred mound, but they also reference Heliopolis in there in a special way. So individually, whether you do it the satellite pyramids or whether you do the major ones at Giza, they all point to Heliopolis, whether that's intentional or not. Let you know, there's no smoking gun on there. Uh, but because of the pyramids are kinked, they're not going to they're not going to form a straight line. So that you know that's obvious, okay? But Khafre's and the corner of the Great Pyramid are and confirmed by more recent best su survey methods. Now the uh, Abu Sir pyramids and down to our many Kamau pyramid, as well as lying up the Black Pyramid. They all point not only to Heliopolis, but they point to special places within there, and and uh, they all focus. So the ones there's one which doesn't, and that's interesting that it points at what's called Area 200 of recent excavations, which is this sanctuary, very important sanctuary there. But the rest are all crossing the mound. So this area of Heli Heliopolis is the ancient mound, confirmed geophysical surveys, and it matches the the old texts, all of them. Uh, in, bring up the importance of, of Heliopolis. Uh, we're not relying on, on some 19th century premonitions to find these things. This is what they told us in the text. It's left. Uh, these are, there are clear references to it. But what I want to, what I mean by that is, so, is actually, you know, like, again, I've got a lot of respect for alternatives. A lot, a lot of respect. But, uh, if you can read through it here, but the so-called Giza, Giza diagonal, this is using poisoning in the well. Uh, the so-called Giza diagonal. Now, I've got to, you know, I've got to be honest. Um, the so-called Orion alignment does not fit now, and it does not fit in the past. It just doesn't. You can't. It just doesn't, and it won't ever, be, uh, unless you know there's new satellite data comes in the future where we have we found out that the movement of Orion has been changing. That could could uh, bring it up, but it does not now, and it did not in the past, based on best available data. So the so-called Orion alignment, it should be okay. Now, deliberate intent. There was perhaps a deliberate intention for this relative position of the pyramids. Uh, connect the city of Heliopolis. Well, okay. Symbolic link between Giza, however, is not new. He mentions okay. You can read through this where he talks about that, but uh, he uses words such as uh, that, that. The term "slightly step back" that Lerner used in his context has many has misled many to assume that. Giza diagonal actually existed well it does and it fits much much better so what you have is if you do an alignment from okay so this line would carry on and run right through the guts of Heliopolis if you run it back it misses the corner of Menkaura pyramid by a massive 23 meters okay Thirty meters misses by thirty meters. It misses by over forty meters. So, where do you get off? This is poisoning the well. Closer scrutiny, slightly step, but step back. Uh, what we have is well, essentially, you know, um, a def def you know, look at if you want to defend your theory, that's great. But uh, this is worded in a certain way. The so-called uh, Giza diagonals, and so they fit much better much much better and they incorporate other places as well so uh, again i'm not a fan of of learner but uh what we um when he's talking about the alignments and the margins of error in those alignments the Giza diagonal towards heliopolis which has far more uh logical association to heliopolis in other ancient texts as well than what would be mentioned here and, uh, you know, so again, if you want to, it's interpret, you can interpret certain things, but if you want to use a body of evidence, well, you can make that same interpretation in one way. But when it comes to the alignments, the alignments are very, very clear and they're much more detailed than your, your Orion alignment simply does not work. There is no other way to say that. It doesn't work. As where the texts referring to Heliopolis are from either lower to upper Egypt, across from the Old Kingdom to the Late Period, consistent. Uh, the pyramid, not just the Giza pyramids individually, but other pyramid fields also pointing towards Heliopolis and to also in important sites where recent excavations have firstly confirmed the, where the mound was, but also the sacred sanctuary where the um, Ramses and Samtik... Okay. 
Helio, um, this Orion does not work. 